Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. It's that time of month again, time for the Stampin' Anonymous feature tutorial. So if you're not familiar with the Stampin' Anonymous tutorials, let's start there. When you are a Kitchen Table Stamper customer or a demonstrator on the Kitchenettes, you get the Stampin' Anonymous tutorial bundle for free. A customer can get this bundle of six 3D or fun fold tutorials by placing any order at marissaalvarez.stampinup.net. So any size Stampin' Up order during the month gets you a free six pack of inspiration. And Kitchenettes, that's my Stampin' Up team demonstrators who are in um, current good standing, as long as you're active with Stampin' Up, you'll also get the six packs of pack of tutorials for free. Every month, six better than flat inspirations delivered right to your email. So this month's featured tutorial is this awesome gift bag. So each month the Stampin' Anonymous tutorial stampers and I choose a tutorial and we feature. We show you how to make that tutorial. We make it different, but we show you how to make it. So this is our gift bag for today. And inside, uh, I won't take it out, I'll show you. I found these fun Edible Ocean Jello Play and edible sand jello play at the Dollar Tree. And I thought from the very beginning that I had to pair up the edible sand or the edible ocean with the Make a Splash host set. So this is a photopolymer stamp set that's exclusive for hosts. A host is any Stampin' Up! demonstrator or customer who places a $150 order, whether at a workshop with multiple orders that total $150, or if it's a customer order that totals 150 or a demonstrator order that totals 150. So no matter how you shop Stampin' Up, if you hit that 150, then you get host money, Stampin' Rewards, that can be used for anything in the catalog or exclusive stamp sets that you can't get any other way. So Make a Splash really appealed to me because of the sentiments. I love the just keep swimming, you always make a splash. Those are um, kind of punny in my sense of humor. I love that you can build in the little fishbowl. The fishbowl is a little bit bigger than the snow globe domes, so you can definitely stamp, cut out with the snow globe and add the dome, really cute. The crab is my favorite, that's the one we're gonna use. And here's our little gift bag. So let's get started with our gift bag by building the actual bag. I'll put a picture of the template in the principal project sheet. I always do that when we're doing something three-dimensional. You're gonna start with a full sheet of cardstock, eight and a half by 11. I've got crumb cake and we're gonna score it up. Let's pop this guy in at the 11 inch side and we'll score at one half two and a quarter, five and three quarters, and seven and a half. And then we're gonna rotate to the eight and a half inch side. And we're gonna score at one and three quarters, and we'll score at seven and three quarters. Okay, now let's work the scores with the bone folder. So we've got all of our score lines burnished with the bone folder. Now paper snips. And let's cut out this little long rectangle. I like to cut at a slight angle. And then this is our glue tab, so we'll cut at a more severe angle. That little guy has trash. Now we've got another tiny little rectangle here. So again, kind of a severe angle and then a slight angle. Now this bag is gonna have tabs on the bottom and on the top so that we can fold in the top and get a nice smooth edge and secure our ribbon handles. So we'll go ahead with each of these score lines and we'll cut out a small dart. You don't need an extreme angle, just a small dart to remove the score line. Stop when you get to the intersecting score. So we're gonna do that for all three lines on the bottom and on the top. 
All right, so there's all of our tabs liberated. I've got the small tabs across the top of the box here. Now, what you want to do is with a pen and ruler on each of these wide panels right on the score line, you're going to measure in three quarters of an inch and mark right on the line, just a little dot, and then three quarters of an inch. It's really hard for me to see a metal ruler with all the photo photography lights. All right, so we've got two little dots, three quarters of an inch from the edge and three quarters of an inch from the fold. Same thing in this larger panel. So three quarters of an inch from each of these folds, you wanna mark with a little dot. All right, so there's our dots. Now you'll need a one quarter inch hole punch. You can use a standard office supply punch or I'll give you a Amazon link if you don't have one of these. You're gonna punch four times. Get rid of those little pen marks. Just kind of center your punch over the line and punch out. There's the holes for your ribbon handles. Now for the placement of your tear and tape, you're going to run your tear and tape adhesive over each of these panels right underneath the score line. So on the body of the bag, underneath the score line, on this side of the paper. Then this is the front of your box because there's no seam in the front of your box. You'll also run tear and tape adhesive in like an equal sign and parallel lines. And then your long glue tab. Now your long glue tab goes on the other side of the paper, so fold that one in. And then run your tear and tape adhesive. Now before we fold anything up, we're gonna get our ribbon handles. I'm using the 5 8 inch braided burlap. It's on um, last call, but it's on the re retirement list. And so it's available while supplies last. I love this nice heavy duty um, braided trim. It makes fantastic handles for bags and boxes. I'm gonna pop the end through the quarter inch hole outside to the inside. Do you see that? And then you're going to bend it. You wanna make sure you keep the seam front side from outside to inside. Put your braided trim through the holes and then go ahead and stick it into that adhesive. Burnish it in and repeat with the other handle. So you've got your handles burnished into the adhesive. Now for extra security, a little bit more tear and tape adhesive right over securing that braided trim from both sides now. When we fold this up, both sides of that ribbon is gonna have extra strong adhesive securing it. All right, let's peel this long side and we're going to fold up our box so that the cut edge line squares up with the fold, the first score line. And we're going to do this first so that when we secure these tabs, it folds over and further secures the glue and gives you a nice smooth rotation all the way around the top of the box once you fold in the top fold. So let me remove the pier, the tear and tape liner here, but hold off on covering this exposed adhesive. You're going to have to do carefully so that you don't stick your box closed at the top, but it's worth it for the nice finish you get around the top of the bag. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. All right, Adhesive down the side is exposed and so is across the top. Fold the cut end into the fold. Make a nice square edge here. When you've got that, hand in the box and burnish from the outside. Then from the top of the box, 
you're gonna fold these tabs in around the top. So when we start here, you can see that we're going to sandwich the seam and we've got a nice smooth edge all the way around the top of the box. So bring those in, burnish them down into the adhesive. At this point, you can flatten and burnish if you like, and you could store this bag flat at this point. Even if you decorated the front of it, you could still store it flat until you need it. Okay, so now we need our box. Let's go ahead and fold in the side tabs, back tab to the front, and then the front tab to the back. That means all of our seams are on the back of the box now. Bottom secure. You can use your bone folder to help you reach to the bottom of the bag and burnish that adhesive. It's a sturdy, cute bag. It holds a nice, um, a nice size gift, and it will also handle something with a lot of weight. All right, so there's our bag. Let's make sure we've got the seams in the back, and we'll work on the front of the bag. Okay, so we've got our designer series paper here. This is come sail with me from the annual catalog. This is retiring as well supplies last. It's a gorgeous nautical um, theme paper, but definitely has some useful patterns, masculine patterns that are nondescript. It doesn't have to be just for the nautical um, adventure in your life. There's some map pages and some stripes, some really great patterns in here that can be used for Oh, really for anything. I love this um, coral and seaweed kind of pattern. It can be dressed up with black and white and gold or black and white and silver and made very elegant. So we're gonna go ahead and adhere our designer series paper centered on the front and the back of our bag. This piece is three and a quarter by five and three quarters. We'll put one on the front and one on the back and then to help us keep our front side front and our back side back. We got a second piece of designer series paper with the compasses. This piece is three and a quarter by two and three quarters. So let's adhere the back, flip it back to the front before we end up with our back side front. And then we're gonna glue this guy on um, about an inch up from the bottom of the first layer of designer series paper. Let me make sure my south is south and my north is north. And we'll glue that guy on. That's already lovely, don't you think? Stampin' Up! Designer Series paper makes lovely easy. All right, we're going to slide aside because now we're going to work on this tag. And we've got some stamping, die cutting, punching, a couple of things to do there to get those layers. Alright, so I've got my Label Me Lovely Punch. I haven't used this one a lot because it was on back order and even maybe stop sale for a little while. But it's a fun, fancy square. Really a great shape. We're going to punch that out of Native Navy. And then we're going to do a little bit of stamping. I'm going to get my Stamp and Pierce mat because I can keep using it. It's coming back in stock and it's going to be a write-in item in the new catalog. Never fear, your photopolymer images will still be excellent. We're gonna do a quick bit of stamping, so I need some Night of Navy and Poppy Parade. I've got my awesome crab image from Make a Splash, and I like just keep swimming. I think we could use that this, um, during this time with the pandemic, just keep swimming. Um, I think crabs kind of swim a little. <laughs> I'm gonna stamp him on Whisper White. And then I'm going to grab another kind of a long scrap. I'm just using scraps here. Just keep swimming. We're gonna do that in Native Navy on Whisper White. Got one more bit of stamping coming right up, but first a little bit of die cutting. Got my big shot here. We're gonna do a little bit of cutting. I've got some scraps. I'm gonna make a couple of passes. We're using the retired, or the retiring, under the C framelits. Love this die set, pairs up perfect. Make a splash. We're gonna cut the net. 
out of soft suede cardstock. And we're gonna cut some seaweed out of crumb cake cardstock. Our awesome seaweed die comes from the um, smooth sailing dies that coordinate with the designer series paper we're using today. And as you can see, I'm literally using scraps to get these dies cut. Let me run those two first. Right, I love this net because generally it just picks right up out of the scrap and then I can run my net through um, the dye brush and get all the little negative pieces out. It usually cuts pretty clean and pretty tidy. If I think that it's going to give me any sort of trouble, I'll just run it through again a couple of times because it stays so nice in the dye but cleans out so easy with the dye brush. You can always pop it through and run it a couple more times before you hit it with a die brush. So when you feel like you've got a good cut, then just die brush it right out of there. If you feel like you're having trouble with any of your um, fine cut dies, you can always grab a little piece of cardstock. This is that brown paper I use for templates. And I just folded one in half and I'll lay it underneath the thin die adapter to make the sandwich just a little bit more squeezy. A little bit more pressure on that die, you're certain to get a clean cut. So just a couple of things for those fine detail dies, a couple of tips. Got another bit of die cut in here. We're gonna use our tag from Bonanza Dies again. Bonanza Dies are also retiring and while supplies last, it's ones that go with the Bonanza Buddies. Got that cool tag, those great little borders. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do and replace this tag. I've been using it so much and there's nothing quite like it in the new catalog. But we do have a couple of great label sets coming, so we'll see. There's our Bonanza tag. And I got one little thing, something that I'm gonna try on this sample that I didn't do on the last one. So I'm back to the retiring under the sea dies. It's got this piece that cuts out tiny little fish. It's a uh, negative. And I've already cut out a balmy blue circle, stitch circle. This is a one and seven eighths inch stitched circle. I cut it using the stitch shapes. I'm gonna cut across it with these little fish. I didn't do that in the last one, but we're going to in this one. We're just gonna cut straight across and pop out those little negative space. See what it looks like. I thought it would just keep swimming. It'd be a really cute detail. Let's see if it uh, is as cute as I imagine. <laughs> Look at the little fish swimming across the circle. <laughs> All right, let's see how that turns out. So here's our sample without the little fishes, and here's one with the little fishes. Let's see. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere my balmy blue circle right inside my Knight of Navy label. I want them to swim up at a little bit of an angle. And then my seaweed. Get that guy. I love these little details. There's our seaweed. Our tag. Needs a little bit more stamping detail. I've got soft suede ink. And my sand. This is from Seaside Notions. Going to protect our work surface. I didn't bring my little grid paper this time, so I'm gonna use the back of my Stampin' Anonymous tutorial. Ink up with soft suede, and just right across the bottom of the tag, we're gonna stamp a little bit of sand. 
And that's soft suede on Sahara sand. I got a couple of little fussy bits to do, which I will do and then meet you back here. I'm gonna fussy cut my little crab and I'm gonna dye brush the net. So when I cut this guy, I'm gonna just turn the paper into the scissors. The scissors are opening and closing within my dominant hand. My non-dominant hand is steering. And you can see I started with some fussy detail. I'm going to have some more fussy detail, but I'm going to have an end where I finish on kind of a smooth cut. So it's just something to keep in mind when you're fussy cutting too. If you finish on a fiddly bit like where we're at right now, um, that makes it harder to hold on to your piece. So make sure you choose the fussiest area first and then end in a smooth area. All right, I'm gonna cut this guy out, dye brush my net, and we'll be right back. Okay, so I'm almost there, just cutting the crab. He's just too cute. He's a labor of love, but he's so cute. There's where maybe an electronic cutter would come in handy. Host sets don't usually have die sets, but sometimes they have punches or things. It's a surprise, but he is so worth it. He's the whole reason why I got this stamp set. All right, my classic label. I'm gonna go ahead and punch out my Just Keep Swimming greeting. I love that. I think we all need to hear that these days, right? Just keep swimming and have some jello edible sand. <laughs> some jello play edible sand. All right, the um, construction here. I think we're in the construction stage of things. So what I did was I took my net and kind of decided how I wanted to fill my space. When I got my net positioned, I took my label and a few mini dimensionals and we're gonna dimensional this guy to the net. Now, I don't know that that's gonna be exactly enough. Maybe a little bit more. Hmm, maybe I like it that way. I don't know that that's going to be exactly enough adhesive to hold everything to the tag. So at this point, I can see where my adhesive will be covered and I can just streak a little bit of multi-purpose liquid glue on the net. Adhere that to the tag. We want our label centered and level burnish all that adhesive down. Now for our um, seaweed, we're going to need some half a dimensionals, little mini halves at the bottom, and we're going to need a little bit of multi-purpose liquid glue toward the top. We're going to glue this onto two levels. Bottom of the seaweed is going to be all the way at the bottom of the tag, and just floating up over our balmy blue ocean. Ooh, I like the little fish there in the background. What a cool touch. I'm glad I tried it. All right, now the crab. I'm not going to glue him down real tight, actually. I want his little um, legs to kind of curl up and his claws. And we're gonna put him kinda, almost reminds me of an aquarium window. And then just keep swimming, goes on with a couple of dimensionals. more dimension the better. That's how I feel about 3D projects. I'm gonna pop the little greeting over his bottom legs, but we don't want to cover too much of him. He's just too um, special to cover too much of him. Center your greeting and burnish that down. Now it's time for the twine. This goes with the um, Come Sail Away designer series paper. I love this. It's Sahara sand and Knight of Navy, very masculine color combination. We're going to tie a loopy bow on the top of our tag using this great baker's twine. I think that looks pretty good. I need ribbon scissors. We'll cut away from the spool. We're almost done. I love this project. Very masculine. 
but would be absolutely okay for the kids in your life, especially with the edible sand and encouraging them to just keep swimming, or even for your um, Stampin' friends, male or female. They'll appreciate the details and the sentiment, I think. Maybe even the jello play. I've got many dimensionals on the back of my tag. I love a 3D project with layers and layers of dimensionals. So we're three levels deep now at this point. I like that you can really layer up dimensionals when you're doing bags, boxes, and gifts. Really make them pop. And we'll adhere that right of center and top of center. Kind of as if maybe it gives the idea of the tag hanging on the handle, but without having to make that stretch. Once you get it nice and straight, burnish down. Let's fill. Got my edible sand here and a piece of tissue paper. What do you guys think about the little fish in the background or no little fish in the background? Kind of wishing there were little fish in the background of this one. It's a really cool die set. Alright. So I'm just going to take my jello clay and put it in the center of the tissue paper. Fold up corner to corner. Wrap around the box from the end. Around the box. And then what I'll do is just slide it right into the box. The tissue paper while it's where it's kind of long, fluff it up. <laughs> there is your gift. Just keep swimming. All right, you guys. If you got any questions about the retiring list, about the project, about the Stampin' Anonymous tutorials, about the benefits of being a kitchenette, if there's anything I can do to help you stay crafty, you can email Marissa at kitchentablestamper.com and a shop Stampin' Up 24/7. Buzz over to MarissaElvarez.StampinUp.net. Thanks for watching.